Hello and welcome to PM Studios Java Programming Tutorials number 4. Today we'll be going if and else statements and we will be revisiting the calculator that we had did, the simple addition calculator that we had done in uh, I believe it was tutorial number 2. So let's go ahead and get started. This is a bit of a lengthy one as you notice. Like always I have already imported the scanner and created the class and the main method. So we're just going to go ahead and fire away with, um, the first thing I'm going to do is going to declare floats. And I did want to revisit floats just a little bit um, to, to enlighten some of you that I might have confused earlier. Basically the difference between a float and a double, um, they both accept decimals and the only difference is, is that I was absolutely right. Um, the float accepts less and the double accepts more. The float has a um, accuracy yield to up to seven decimal places, I believe, and the double has an accuracy yield up to 14 decimal places, whereas the float is 16 bits, generally, or 16 bytes, and the double is 32 bytes. So, um, it all depends on how large your number is, but for the sake of these uh, tutorials, I'm going to try to steer clear of doubles as much as possible, considering that um, uh, we won't be working with numbers large enough to even merit using doubles. It's just wasted memory space. So we're going to go ahead and declare three floats, A, B, and C. And this is another thing that I wanted to go over right away, is that when you're declaring multiple variables of the same type, you can actually, um, you can essentially declare them this way. Uh, this declares all three of them. It says that we're making three floats, A, B, and C. None of them have variables t assigned to them right now, so their values are actually nil. Um, it's literally nil, N-I-L, um, to the program at the moment. So we'll assign vari variables to them, uh, we'll assign values to them later, but for now we're just going to declare them like that. The next thing we're going to want to do is declare an integer, and then, of course, as always, we're going to call in our scanner. Scanner input equals new scanner system.n. Alrighty. And now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have the users input two variables, which they're going to want to be doing some mathematical process to. So system.out.println please enter the first variable. Or let's do value. We're going to go ahead and do a equals input dot next float. Um, another thing to keep in, uh, keep in mind is that floats are also known as singles to some other programming languages. Uh, for the sake of just this Java programming tutorials, we're only going to be using them known as floats. But for my next programming series, which I believe might be a C-sharp programming series, uh, we will be calling them singles because uh, to do some of the commands and that, you need to call them singles. Anyways, moving on, we can always just copy this and then paste it down if you wanted to save time. All you'd have to do is change first to second and then A to B. Okay, and then now what we're going to do is we're going to prompt the user to enter the uh, the type of equation that we they want to do. So it's going to be one really long text output. We're going to say please. Don't know why my handwriting is so bad. Please enter the type of function you would like to perform. And then we're going to put in parentheses, we're going to do 1 equals plus, 2 equals minus, my goodness, 3 equals, let's do times, and 4, 4 equals division. <coughs> okay, we're going to close the parentheses close the quote, close the parentheses again, and then put our semicolon, and then we're going to have that go to D. Since we're not dealing with any uh, any decimal places, we want it to go to an integer, that way we have precise values. I'm going to have input dot next int. Okay, and so here's where the if statements come in. Um, unlike uh, 
unlike small basic like my last programming series the if statements in java programming are relatively easy you can format them in a lot of different ways and the ide will know how to interpret them every single way so just for the sake of um, old habits let's say if d equals one now this is the general format for an if statement there is no then um, so it's just if, and then in parentheses, you put the command, and then on the next line, you could enter whatever you wanted. So I'm in the habit of putting um, braces in here, but you don't necessarily need them, and I'll show you what I mean later. So if that's the case, then C equals A plus B. And then system.out.println. I'm going to do C close that. Alright, so here we can base everything else off of this, but what I was saying earlier is that you can do it like this and it brackets everything off if it's easier for you to read like that, or you could simply do it like this and then just put your next if statement down here and it would still read it just fine. So it's purely a matter of preference. Like I said, I have old habits, so I'm going to do it like this. Now what we can do is we can just select all of this, copy it, and then oh, highlight over that, paste it there, and as you can see everything's automatically plugged in properly, just change that, change that, and that's done. So we can just copy this now, and we don't even have to worry about typing in the else. You may have to correct the alignment in some cases. And then we're just going to change this to 3. Oops. And change that to multiplication. Change that to 4, and this to division. And lo and behold, we have the program almost finished. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to type in just a plain old else statement. Um, an else signifies that it's the very last command. If you need to put in multiple commands inside your if statement, you want to do else ifs, just like I've done here. If you want to do just the very last command, meaning if it isn't any of these up here, just resort to this one automatically, and then just put it in else. But just know that that one is specifically reserved for the last slot in your if statements. So we're going to do system.out.println. And this is called error handling. It's a very mild and beginner version of error handling, but it's still error handling nonetheless. Okay, so what we've done here is we've created it so it's anticipating an, a value entered from the user between 1 and 4, and we've got solutions for all 1 through 4. But if they enter anything else, so if they enter a negative number, if they enter a 0, or if they enter a number 5 and higher, um, even letters, because letters have ASCII code assignments, so those would return as numbers themselves, very, very high numbers. and. Uh, it would catch them right here and tell them that their uh, operations were invalid and it would terminate the program right there. So no harm, no foul. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to compile it. I'm going to save this as if statements.java. I'm going to overwrite that and then we're going to go ahead and do this. So I'm going to do 12, 31, and let's do addition. Please keep in mind that you want to do a trial run for every possible outcome. So 12, 31, do subtraction, comes out to negative 19. Oops, I want to rerun that, my bad. 12, 31, and then multiplication, works fine. And then let's do division, that looks just about right. Now if you'll notice, the reason why we wanted to do floats there is so that it returns um, any possible fractions as well, so we have the uh, the answers as precise as possible. Even though, uh, you know, decimal points like this are, regardless of what they are, they're considered as inaccuracies. Um, to the mathematics world, it's still as close as we can get. So, that's pretty much it. Um, the link to this code will be in the description. Uh, actually, yeah, I think I'll upload the code into a zip file. Well, like I said, the link will be in the description for this code. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comments section. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I will see you next time.